so vast, profound, and wondrous, Allah, it is really met with the thousand years now we can see and hear it, accept and maintain it. May we unfold the meaning of God to let us do. Good morning, everyone. Uh, in East Asian Buddhist countries, uh, we celebrate Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha's birthday on April 8th. In that uh, Kerala tradition, they celebrate Buddha's birthday, Enlightenment Day, and Nirvana Day on one same day uh, in solar calendar in May, and they call it a uh, Vesak. So it's a big uh, festival for uh, Southeast Asian Buddhist countries. But uh, we celebrate Buddha's birthday in the spring, April 8th, and Buddha's Enlightenment Day in December, December 8th. And Buddha's, uh, it's kind of strange to say celebrate, Buddha's, Buddha's death on the, uh, in the winter uh, in February, February 15th. Uh, so, uh, and yet historically we don't know when Buddha was born, which, which time of the year, and even which year he was born, sometime around 2,500 years ago. Uh, you know, those the uh, April 8th, December 8th, and February 15th, those 8th and 15th. Uh, 15th is the middle of the, in the uh, lunar calendar, middle of the uh, month, and that is always full moon day. So 8th is a half moon day. So those 8th or 15th are the days the people celebrated uh, you know, those occasions, not exactly when Buddha was born or attained the enlightenment. So we don't know, uh, historically we don't really know when Buddha was born and Buddha was enlightened and when, exactly when Buddha passed away. Anyway, at San Shinji we celebrate Buddha's birthday on Sunday. Uh, close to April 8th, and that is today. So we made a special uh, shrine for baby Buddha. Uh, probably there might be some people who are not familiar with uh, this shrine and how we celebrate or what we do during the ceremony. So first I uh, talk a little bit about uh, the story, how Buddha was born. Of course, this is a story made much later than Buddha's life. So we don't know it really happened in the same, uh, same way. But it, uh, historically, it was true Buddha was born at a park called Lumbini. That is outside of the uh, city, 
named uh, Kapital Bastu, yeah. where Buddha's father was the king. And it is said Buddha's mother came from nearby uh, kingdom. And when uh, Buddha's mother gave birth, she tried, it seems she tried to go back to her own uh, parents' place. And on her way, he gave up birth at this park. So Buddha was born outside on the ground. And not only his birth, but when he was attained awakening, he was sitting on the ground. And when he died, he was, he was again on the ground. So his, his life was on the ground. I think it, it, this is a kind of an important point of Buddha's life. You know, he lived in the nature, very close in the nature. Even though he was born in the palace, he left the palace and practiced uh, on the ground. Anyway, <clears throat> so when uh, Buddha was born, he was outside. Uh, and uh, it is said, this is a story, don't believe it. <laughs> Indra, the heavenly god, held the baby. Then, uh, uh, right after that, this baby Buddha stand up. That was what uh, this statue means. He stood up right after he was born and uh, walk seven steps toward each direction, four directions, and uh, see the world. And said, uh, above the heaven, and uh, under the heaven, that means in the heavenly realms and human realms. This is what Buddha does. Uh, one hand point the heaven and another hand point the earth. And he said, uh, I am the most venerable, honorable one. That was what he, he said right after he was born. You don't need to believe this. <laughs> Uh, later, I introduce how Dogen interpreted this saying. Uh, anyway, after that, it said, you know, two pond somehow appeared. One pond has cold water, another pond has uh, warm water to base the Buddha. And also, the heaven dra dragons. Uh, then the cold and warm water, like a shower, to you know, bathe the baby. Uh, that is why we put the statue of baby Buddha in the, uh, we call it amateur or the sweet tea. Uh, and uh, there is a ladle on the, the bowl. And when we have the ceremony, we bathe the baby Buddha with, you know, this prey do. So we are like the dragon to bathe the Buddha, to celebrate uh, his birth. And uh, uh, according to that story, uh, you know, there are many flowers entire, within the entire world started to bloom to celebrate this Buddha's birth. And in early April in Japan was uh, one of the most beautiful time of the year. We have so many flowers after long winter. Uh, so making you know this flower shrine is a children's job. You know, children go to the field and collect the flowers and they make the decoration for the baby Buddha shrine. Uh, this time, we have a very matured Buddha's children. <laughs> Yesterday, <laughs> this, this decoration. I appreciate uh, 
Sharing and uh, Judith and uh, Dorian made this decoration. <coughs> and that is what we, how we celebrate uh, Buddha's birthday. So uh, during the ceremony, first we chant the uh, Heart Sutra. Then uh, before and after you know, the chanting, I raise the Buddha. And after finish the chanting and the echo, uh, I ask all of you to offer incense, uh, the base the Buddha with the light and offer incense one by one. Anyway, that is how we celebrate uh, that birthday. You know, uh, this year we had a very cold and long winter, but today it's so warm. And this morning I found uh, the cherry blossoms, several cherry blossoms starting to bloom. It's very auspicious. <laughs> anyway, uh, as a Dharma talk, uh, I'd like to introduce how Dogen. Dogen is the founder of the Japanese Soto Zen tradition. Uh, Dogen lived uh, in the 13th century. And from that time, we celebrate Buddha's birthday in the exactly the same way. And so I'd like to introduce uh, Dogen's Dharma talk about Buddha's birthday uh, and this kind of celebration. Uh, this book, uh, Dogen's Extensive Record, is a translation of uh, Ehe Kolok, that is a collection of Dogen's formal Dharma discourses at the Dharma Hall. And also, uh, there is a collection of his Chinese poems, and this entire book text was is written in Chinese. And uh, me and my friend, Taigen Dan Leighton, uh, made translation. This is a big book. It took us, uh, <laughs> took us five years to, trans to make this book. Anyway, so Dogen uh, had the same Buddha's birthday celebration each year, and he gave the uh, Dharma discourse each year, and this is one of them. And this one, if we want to uh, take a look at this discourse, uh, it discourse number 42. And uh, it appears page 107. And this Dharma discourse was uh, taken place in 1241, because Dogen was born in the year 1200. He was uh, 41 years old. And he still lived in Kyoto at a monastery named Koshoji. So this discourse was given in Kyoto. Uh, he says, Today, my original teacher, Shakyamuni Tathagata, descended to be born at Lumbini Park. Descend, descended means uh, not only Shakyamuni, but it is said uh, the Bodhisattva, who complete Bodhisattva practice and ready to be born as a Buddha as a final life, uh, stayed in a heaven named Tushita. So Shakyamuni resided in the Tushita heaven. Heaven is usually a high place, higher than this world. So it said we, he descended. He, he came down to this world, this world from the heaven. He said, every year on this day, this day means April 8th, we always have Lumbini Park. He said, each year we have 
we always have room mini park. And in this case, this room mini park does not necessarily mean the park in Nepal. But this is the mini park where we celebrate Buddha's birthday. This is the mini park. Tell me, so he is asking his student, tell me whether the great sage is born or not. So this is not a past tense, but this present sense. That means today, here is a Lumbini Park. And he's asking the student, what do you think? Is Buddha born today here, right now, right here? If you say, he has descended to be born, I grant you have, you have done one portion of practice. Some, some of his students may say, yes, he, he, this morning he descended uh, from the Trista heaven and born in this world. Then uh, Dogen said, I grant those people who had done some practice. That, mean, that, that is correct. That means we need to practice in the way Buddha is born. And he continued, if you say he has not descended to be born, I grant you have you have done one portion of practice. Even you said you no, Buddha. It said Buddha have not uh, have not descended, but Buddha is does not. I think uh, present tense is better. That means Buddha does not. Born. That is not born today. And Dogen said that is also correct. So whether his students said yes or no, also correct. That means, uh, you know, uh, in the uh, sutra of Buddha's last teaching, right before he passed away, uh, you know, Buddha was dying, and his uh, disciples were around him. And as a uh, final teaching before his death, uh, one thing he said is, after my death, from now on, you should practice following or based on my teaching. When you practice my teaching, that is Dharma, then uh, the, it is uh, in that sutra it is said the uh, indestructible, indestructible uh, dharma body will manifest always within your practice. That means uh, when we practice following Buddha's teaching, following Buddha's teaching. Buddha's teaching is called Dharma. Before he, uh, he died, Shakyamuni said, if, if, if you see Dharma, you see me. So people thought this Dharma, Buddha's teaching is Buddha himself. And uh, instead of this, uh, Lower case D, Dharma. Uh, there is another meaning of Dharma. You know, this uh, means Buddha, what Buddha taught using languages. Depending up, upon to whom he was talking, he gave various teachings. But all of Buddha's teaching was about uh, chapter D, Dharma. That is not teaching but that is a truth or a reality itself to which Buddha awakened to. In order to share this uh, chapter of the Dharma, truth or reality, you know, Buddha had to speak, express that truth using language. And uh, you know, depending upon the occasion and, and the audience, Buddha uh, talked in various ways. 
and also depending upon who had what Buddha said, their understanding might be various. So this uh, Dharma as a teaching is uh, plural, but this dar capital P Dharma as truth or reality is singular, always singular, and with uh, uh, capital D. And uh, in the beginning, people so, uh, thought Buddha's teaching is Buddha's body, so we, they called the, his teaching is his body. And this body in uh, Sanskrit is kaya, so dharma kaya. But later, people started to think uh, not what Buddha taught using various uh, uh, you know, logics or examples, uh, we should see and experience this capital B Dharma, the same truth Buddha awakened to. And uh, later, especially in Mahayana, uh, Dharma body or Dharma Kaya referred to this Dharma Kaya. That means the way things are in this entire universe. This is Dharma, how things are. And that is Buddha's body. And uh, this Dharma, as Buddha's teaching, is an expression or explanation of this capital D Dharma. So, uh, especially in Mahayana Buddhism, uh, this means the way things are in this entire universe, and in my understanding, that is uh, the you know, interconnectedness, the network of interdependent origination. That is what things are. And uh, the, from different uh, angles, Buddha explained how things are. And impermanence is one thing, and no substance, or no ego or self is another point, and also inter everything is interconnected, is another thing. So this way of uh, all beings are, is itself Buddha's body. And uh, when Buddha, Buddhism went to China, Chinese people thought that is how the seasons come, coming and going, spring, summer, fall and winter, you know, things are changing. But in each year, same thing happening. This uh, change and continuation uh, is one of the way Chinese Buddhists think this Dharma body are. So uh, if we awaken to this Dharma, and practice and live based on that Dharma, we give birth to the Buddha. Wait. We give birth to Buddha. Buddha was born, Buddha is born when we practice following this capital D Dharma. So we are the parents. We are the parents of the Buddha. And this Buddha is eternal truth. So sometimes Dogen said, uh, parents are younger than the baby. You know, you know, our life is very impermanent and very short, and we are tiny beings, and our practice is not so great. Still, we are the parents of Buddha. And this baby is eternal dharma. So this is a kind of interesting uh, thing. Anyway, so uh, in, a sen in one sense, you know, we give a birth to the Buddha. So if Dogen the student said, yes, Buddha was, is born today, that means we are practicing following Buddha's teaching or this uh, truth. But when another student said, no, Buddha is not born, that means uh, that kind of thing, what I said right now, is just a thinking. So, 
when we practice, we just practice. So we, we don't care whether Buddha is born or not. We just practice following Buddha's teaching. That is enough. If we think because we practice in this way, Buddha is born or we give a bath to Dharmakaya Buddha, that is something extra. So what we should do is just do it without thinking this is this is a great thing. That is still thinking and that can be attachment, how important our practice is. Therefore, how how great we are. That kind of you know grasping may occur from the, this uh, you know idea or saying, you know, uh, because of our practice, Buddha is born. So in order to be free from that kind of, uh, in a sense, pride or self-evaluation to say Buddha is not born, is also a correct answer. So both Dogen said both are correct. We need both actually. We need a belief that within our practice, Buddha's Dharmakaya is born. But we need to be free from that idea at the same time. That, that is, uh, Fat Dogen always says both sides. One is called a liberation, another is called a uh, danger or manifestation. This is Todatsu, and this is uh, Genjo. Genjo in Genjo Koan, it manifests, it's actually there. And then uh, we, are, we need to be liberated. That means we should not uh, attach ourselves to what we are doing. Even that doing is based on Buddha's teaching. So we always need a both sides. And these two answers uh, imply those two sides of our practice. So he said, if you say he has descended to be born, I grant you, have, you have done one portion. So he said, only one portion of practice. And if you say he has not descended to be born, I grant you have done one portion of practice because another portion. So both are correct, but if we, we cling to either side, you are wrong. That is his logic. Then he continued. If you are already like this, means if you have both, you are not obstructed by mountains or oceans and will be born to a king's palace like Shakyamuni Buddha. If we, are, we see both sides, then uh, we are not obstructed by mountains or oceans, means a space. You know, Buddha was born far in the country far away and a long time ago, but uh, we can be born, in this case we can be born uh, like Yashikam at his, his father's palace. If you are not obstructed by mountains or oceans, you are obstructed by birth or not? This is a question. Birth, by birth means the time, which, which birth? You know, Buddha practiced, it said, 500 lifetimes. And in each lifetime, he, he lived as a different uh, living being, sometimes uh, as a human being, sometimes as a monkey or tears or whatever. So that means our karmic conditions. If we are not uh, obstructed by the mountains and ocean, that is space, and not obstructed by the birth means a karmic condition. Uh, even if previous uh, 
by birth or not, even if previous Buddhas and ancestors say that they are obstructed by birth. And this is true, we are obstructed, we are limited or conditioned by birth, uh, where we are born and who are our family and what kind of situation uh, when we are born. You know, when I was born, that was 1948, three years after uh, World War II. That, uh, that was my condition. And that uh, condition of Japanese society, I was uh, born in, uh, I think, influenced a lot about who I am. So it is true. It is, uh, you know, for, uh, one aspect of our life, we are conditioned or limited by where we are born or, or what we are born or which family and what kind of the uh, situation this entire uh, society are. So in, in a sense, we are obstructed by birth. But, uh, but he said, today, this mountain monk, Dogen, uh, simply said that I am not obstructed by birth. When he said, I am, it, he doesn't say, I am. But he, you know, in Japanese, we don't need subject. So he doesn't really say, I am, as a one particular person, but this means we are. Uh, we are not obstructed by us, but all of us, even though uh, you know we are limited, conditioned by our karmic situation, and yet at the same time we are not uh, conditioned by karmic uh, uh, attribute. We have always both sides. That is another way of manifestation and revelation. So uh, we can be free from our karma, even though we are limited by our karma. And if we are not obstructed by mountains or ocean, that is space, and are not obstructed by birth or karmic conditions, all people in the entire earth, not only Dogen or not only Buddhist, but all people in the entire earth and the entire universe are born together with Shakyamuni Tathagata. So all of us, all living beings are born with Shakyamuni uh, at the Rungini Park on that day, that means today, or when Dogen gave this Dharma discourse and say, so all living beings are born together with Shakyamuni and say, above the heaven and below the heavens, I alone am the world honored one. So not only this uh, baby Buddha named Shakyamuni, but all, of, all living beings are born at the same time together with Shakyamuni and all of them, all of us is saying, above the heaven and below the heaven, I alone am the world or not one. I think this is a really wonderful thing. This means, uh, as Ujjamuroshi says, or I, as I often quote Ujjamuroshi, we are born together with the entire world, and we live together with the entire world, and when we die, this entire world died together with us. So each one is uh, the center of the world. It's not the center because this entirety is us. Anyway, that means, uh, you know, the story. When Shakyamuni was born as a baby, he stood up and walked uh, seven steps. And it said in each of the, uh, underneath the, each of the steps, said the lotus flower blooms and supported the baby. And 
uh, fat dog is the same here, the same thing is happening when we are born. So this is not only Shakyamuni. All of us are world or other one, most venerable. But he says, after taking seven steps in the ten directions, so not only baby Buddha, but we all are taking seven steps in each ten directions. This uh, statement, and he said, this statement, that one means I am I'm the world one, another one. This statement was the lion's roar. Lion's roar means Buddha's teaching. Lion is considered the uh, strongest, most powerful animal. So when the lion roared, all, all animals become quiet. So when Buddha gave a uh, expression about this Dharma, <coughs> all discussion is ceased. That is what lion's roar means. So uh, Doge is saying this saying, I and the world on at one, the baby, not only Shakyamuni, but all of us, is saying is lion's goa, that means absolute truth. But he's, he said, uh, was the lion's roar and a uh, baby's crying. Actually, this is simply a uh, baby's crying. You know, when baby was born, he, they could, all of us cried. And this crying is Lion's Roar, Buddha's teaching, you know, expressing and speaking that I am the world one at one. Not only Shakyamuni, but all of us are world one at one, most venerable. But we forget when we grown up, we forget about that. And we think, you know, we are. Uh, inferior than some people and superior to some people and uh, we make a kind of a classification, evaluate ourselves. But actually as a life we are all world on at one, most venerable. And we need to uh, not evaluate but uh, okay, what is the word? Venerate. We have to venerate ourselves and our life and the world we are living together with other beings, like Buddha, like Buddha did. Uh, so I really like this thing. After taking seven steps in the ten directions, this statement was the lion's roar and the baby's crying. How do we express such a manifestation? Such a manifestation is Genjo. How can we express our own birth as part or not one? How do we express this? Uh, then, uh, after a pause, Dogen said, when, after a pause means when he speak, uh, what he said about, uh, he, uh, kept silence for a while. And usually what he said before, after this pause, is a poem or verse. So he uh, showed one example of what we should say, how we, we can express, you know, this uh, uh, precious life of each one of us. So after pause, Dogen said, in the entire universe and pervading the heavens, good fortune arrives. So Buddha's birth was really good fortune for all of us because, you know, baby Buddha was born in India about uh, 2,500 years ago. <clears throat> you know, Buddhism is still here, available to us because of this one baby's birth. 
you know, in this entire Buddhist tradition uh, originate this one baby born birth. So it's really fortunate things happen. I think, uh, you know, this world uh, without Buddhism is really different from the world we are living now. If Buddha's teaching does, does not ex existed, or Buddha didn't uh, taught, you know, he had some hes hesitation when he uh, uh, awakened to uh, the truth. He thought this is too difficult, deep and subtle. Even I started to teach, no one could understand. So uh, he thought it's better to enjoy this peacefulness or nirvana and live quietly by himself and pass away. If he chose that way of life, you know, Buddhism is not here today. So, uh, you know, one person's life, one person's experience, and one person's birth, I think, changed uh, this entire world, the history of the human world. And uh, it, everyone, or each one of us, may be such a person, maybe not. But we, we as Dogen said, our life is as precious as Shakyamuni's. So we cannot say, you know, uh, his birth is more precious than our birth. You know, we may not be like uh, so great like Shakyamuni did, and our influence might not be so great, even, you know, just a small thing. But if even just a small thing, that is a positive thing to other uh, people or beings. You know, that is, uh, uh, in a sense, one portion of what Buddha did. You know, our practice and our work, our study and practice continue in you know, Buddha's tradition. So no matter how tiny what we can do, still, you know, this is a part of Buddha's work. So, uh, we should really uh, appreciate what we are doing without, without having pride. Uh, good fortune arrives. The grandmotherly intimate, the grandmotherly intimate heart, that is compassion. You have some question? Just uh, Grandmotherly, grandmother, Grandmotherly? Yeah. Hmm. Is there such an English expression? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Taiwan's creation. <laughs> grandmother. <laughs> like a grandmother. Yeah. You know, very compassionate. The grandmotherly intimate heart is expressed by the sages Descent, uh, descent to birth, Shakyamuni's uh, descending or Shakyamuni's birth. How can we make offerings? How can we make offerings to uh, express our appreciation or gratitude to this baby's birth? How can we make offerings? Serve, uh, make prostrations, and bathe to celebrate the sages Descent to birth. How can we make, express our gratitude to this uh, auspicious occasion, uh, to you know Buddha's birth and also to our own birth? How precious this birth is, or this life is. Then finally, Dogen says, together with the pure great ocean assembly. Uh, you know, Buddhist uh, Sangha is called pure uh, ocean assembly. Pure ocean means, you know, uh, into the ocean, different uh, rivers go into. Different water from different rivers go into the ocean. 
but once uh, those uh, various uh, water from different uh, rivers can uh, enter the ocean, there's no such separation. That is why in the Buddhist Sangha it's called Great Ocean Assembly. We are you know, simply one ocean, one uh, drop of water. So there are no such uh, separation or discrimination. That is the idea of the Buddhist Sangha. That's why Dogen called this a great, a pure ocean assembly. Uh, so together with the pure great ocean assembly, let us enter the Buddha hall and perform the ceremony. You know, in the Zen monasteries, there are uh, basically there are seven important buildings. Uh, you know, Buddha hall is the center. And of course, uh, there is a gate, main gate. And uh, in the west side, there is a monk's hall. And uh, in the north, there is a Dharma hall. And this is Buddha hall. And uh, in the east side, there is a uh, office or kitchen where people work. And there is a in the east side, there is a uh, toilet, and the west side, there is a bathroom. These are four basic uh, buildings, and monks uh, stay in the monk's hall. He sleep, they sleep, and uh, practice dozen, and uh, eat meals within this monk's hall. Or, and this, uh, actually, this is called Sangha Hall. And when uh, the abbot or teacher give a Dharma discourse, he, they go to the Dharma Hall. So that is what this Dharma, Dogen's Dharma speech are uh, given at the Dharma Hall. And, and they go to the Buddha Hall to do the ceremony, to uh, celebrate Buddha's birthday. That is what Dogen is saying. Uh, here we only have one, <laughs> one building. <laughs> so usually Monjushri is uh, sitting on this altar. That means this is a, a Sangha hall. We practice Dazen. Usually Shakyamuni is sitting that side. So when we face that side, this is a, a Buddha hall. And now I'm giving a talk, Dharma talk. This is a Sangha hall, I mean Dharma hall. So this one space, it, uh, all three halls for three Dharma treasures, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Uh, so this is a very precious place. <laughs> Hopefully we may have a uh, Sangha hall or meditation for hall and a uh, uh, permanent Dharma hall. Uh, but I'm not sure. I, I don't want to make this you know, formal monastic uh, facilities. One tiny <laughs> place uh, is enough to me as far as we have uh, enough space. If we have more people, maybe we have to think to build another buildings. But until then, you know, this one small room is enough to practice, study, and uh, doing ceremonies. Uh, it's uh, 11 o'clock, just the time we finish, so now, uh, after this talk, uh, we do some preparation and we are going to have the ceremony. So please stay. And after the ceremony, we have a potluck lunch.
are empty. So if you can, please stay. Okay, thank you very much. Now we make preparation for the ceremony.
We are going to chant the hot sutra in English. If someone needs the thing for you.
heart of grace, perfect wisdom, so strong. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dharma body that fills the pure Dharma world neither appears nor disappears. From the source of great compassion, the Buddha manifests in this world of coming and going. We humbly invite Buddhas through compassion to illuminate our awakening in practice at this temple on this day each year. We commemorate the birth of our great teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha. We have respectfully offered incense, light, water, tea, sweets, and food. Our Sangha has gathered and chanted Heart of Great Perfect Wisdom Sutra. We reverently dedicate this merit to our great teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha, in gratitude for his compassionate kindness. May Buddha serene illumination always shine perfectly bright on our practice allowing us to realize the wondrous virtues of the path of awakening and may all sentient beings completely realize buddha's way Please offer incense and praise to the Buddha one by one.